Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Khmer Score Studio. Welcome to the show. So, on today's episode, I've got a different kind of episode for you. Today, I'm going to be breaking down the tier list rankings for aristocrat style commanders. Now, a couple of notes. Uh, these are 100% based off my own opinions, and your opinions might differ, and that is okay. Also, I am doing this on the fly, meaning I have not uh, actually ranked these before. I didn't do like a pre-ranking before this episode and have like notes on the side. I looked through the commanders before to make sure I remember what they all do. And I got things set up, but uh, yeah, this is just going to be on the fly. So <laughs> I very well might start with a commander in one spot and move it to another spot. But yeah, let me know in the comments below it's just for fun to see, you know, where these aristocrat style commanders stack up against each other. And for the actual list of aristocrat style commanders, I'm using the EDH rec top aristocrat style commanders, and I believe that's like the top 24 or so. So, yeah, with all that said, let's jump into it. Also mentioning that uh, this is from a casual perspective, like, you know, like a seven or, or eight kind of, you know, if you're going to go build the deck, it's not going to be like, oh, yeah, just combo on turn two win. That being said, combo wins uh, do, you know, apply to, you know, casual commander for uh, certain play groups. So, yeah, let's jump into it. Here we go. So, first up, we've got Garna, Blood Fist of Keld, 4 3 Human Berserker. Whenever another creature control dies, draw a card if it was attacking. Otherwise, Garna, Blood Fist of Keld deals one image each opponent. This is a pretty interesting commander, one that can be very effective, especially in a risk threat style build, obviously. I mean,. If you need the card draw, just kind of, you know, wait for your own combat and then, yeah, attack with it and then probably sacrifice in combat or make sure that dies, you know, attacking opponent's creatures so it can be blocked maybe. Uh, but yeah, if you want to dish out damage, you can obviously do that as well. A really good thing about this commander is that it does not specify non-token creatures. So you can either generate, you know, a good amount of damage or a good amount of card draw, you know, by going wide with tokens. You're in pretty good colors for aristocrats. Uh, I mean, obviously there are plenty of ways to make a lot of tokens in red. Red, plenty of ways to sacrifice things in black and ways to take advantage of other death triggers as well and well mostly black but red as well yeah you can do a good amount of damage and a good amount of card draw with this my gut says to start off and there are some really 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 good aristocrat style commanders my gut says garna i'm gonna put you in the c's here tier to start and i guess i should mention that uh s is the best uh than a b c d it is the worst it is the worst so Garna, I'm starting off with you in the C tier. That might change throughout this, but I think I'm going to go kind of on the more cautious side because, again, there are so many really good risk cuts out commander. So we're going to start off there. Next up, let's move on to Logamos Hand of Hatred. Actually, built a really fun deck around this one. A very specific deck, though. 1 3 even Shaman for 1 black and a red. Beginning of combat on your turn, create a 2 1 red elemental creature token with trample and haste. Sacrifice be an next end step. Tap search life for a card, put in your hand, then shuffle. Activate only 5 more creatures died this turn. So basically, a commander that can give you, well, creature fodder by just making you know, that 2 1 each turn, essentially, but also an outlet to, well, tutor. You can tap this commander to tutor for a card, which can be great. That being said, there is that restriction. It's not all that difficult to get that at restriction, though. Obviously, that being said, outside of that tutor, this commander really isn't doing all that much. Yeah, the extra, like, one creature turn is nice. And, of course, yeah, you can take advantage of, you know, death triggers and whatnot with it. That being said, I think Logamos Hand of Hatred. I'm going to start off, again, being pretty cautious with this. So, if I could find you, I'm going to throw you in the D tier to start. And, again... That might change. I might be well off on these to start, but yeah, we're just going to see. <laughs> I did not go through these ahead of time, you know, with an actual list, so uh, it might change. Moving on, Bane, Lord of Darkness. 5-2, God. That costs one white, blue, black. Bane, Lord of Darkness. How to do it. As long as your life toll is less than or equal to half your starting life toll, Bane, Lord of Darkness has indestructible. Whenever another non-token creature you control dies, target opponent may have you draw a card. If they don't, you may put a creature with equal or lesser toughness in your hand on the battlefield. So... This commander is, well, um, I mean, pretty hard to deal with if you can get your life total below half. I mean, that is a little more dangerous. Obviously, there are ways to set your life total so you can actually get there, you know, with like those pay one life type effects that you can repeat, like a blood wall. That being said, obviously, this commander doesn't really have any other protection other than that, which is fine. Uh, and this commander is basically probably always just going to be getting you a card drawn instead of the other, uh, unless you can make deals with an opponent. Because typically... 
players aren't going to be like, yeah, just cheat a creature into play, especially since this Crumb Commander can combo quite easily. And essentially, if they keep seeing you kind of doing that, they're like, yeah, let's stop that combo, essentially. Now, you can kind of partner with a commander or a partner with another player to essentially be like, yeah, okay, I'll combo and take this other player out. I'll leave you alone. That player's just a huge threat. They're in the lead. Let me do it. So, yeah, there are definitely ways you can do that. I'd say overall, yeah, I mean, good at giving you card advantage. Uh, you know, sometimes you can, you know, make deals to get that other part, though. Overall, I'm probably, again, maybe I'm being too cautious, but bam, I'm going to be putting you in the C tier to start. And again, maybe I'm just being way too cautious for these first couple, but I know there are some really heavy hitters coming up. Moving on, Raphael, Fiendish, Savior, 4-4, Devil Noble, Flying. Other demons, devils, imps, and tieflings. You control a plus one of lifelink. Being of each end step, if a creature card is put into your graveyard from anywhere this turn, create a 1 1 red devil creature token with. When this creature dies, it deals one image to any target. This is each end step, which is nice. It only considers creature cards, though, which, again, is kind of like an annoying way of saying it. I believe that just means basically non token, because technically they're like, hey, other yeah, non token creature didn't technically. It did hit your graveyard, but like, it, it's a really weird rule. Um, but yeah, basically, hey, there you go. You can pump your devils, de imps, tieflings, and demons. Give them lifelink. You can make a good amount of creature tokens throughout the game. Again, replacing essentially your creatures when you sacrifice them works really well. Like reassembling skeleton type creatures that you can sacrifice for value. That being said, there are just other commanders out there that definitely provide a bit more. I'm going to start you off. Oh, goodness. I'm probably going to get a lot for this. We're going to go back to the C tier again. Maybe I'm just going to put everything in the D and Z tier. Nothing. Nothing is A, B, or S tier. <laughs> just kidding. All right, let's move on. Moving on, Henzi Toolbox Tori. I love the design of this one. 3-3, three, three, Devil Rogue for black, red, green. Each creature spell you cast a mana value 4 or greater has Blitz. The Blitz cost equal to its mana cost. And again, Blitzing means you can choose to cast it for its Blitz cost if you do against haste. And when it dies, you uh, draw a card. Also, it's the sacrifice being the end step. That's fine. Blitz cost you pay. Cost one less for each time you've cast your commander for the commands on this game. So with this kind of a commander, you really kind of want to get it out and like sacrifice it, recast it, get it out, sacrifice it, recast it to get that reduction down to a lot. I mean, this can do some pretty crazy things. There are some combos that you can do with it. This can give you just a ton of card advantage throughout the game as well by blitzing out a creature, getting its basically, you know, death trigger addition, you know, that it's given with that blitz, blitz essentially to draw cards. There's of course other deck triggers you can take advantage of, like cards like Fecundity, Molder Vine, Reclamation to draw even more. Yeah, and, and again, yeah, there's some definitely combos you can do with this commander. I think overall a good value commander. I'm going to throw Henzi Toolbox Torre, uh, if I could find Henzi Toolbox Torre, there you are, into the B tier. So let's go with the middle of the road. Moving on, we've got Ellis Ilkor Sadistic Pilgrim. Basically a blood artist in the command zone in a way. I mean, like Zolpor Cutthroat, kind of different, but still, here we go. 2-2, two, two, Phyrexian Core Cleric with Death Touch that says whenever another creature enters the battlefield under control, you gain one life. Whenever another creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life. This one is a really, 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 really cool, uh, I mean, just very simple, but effective Urshkrat style commander. One that, again, like a, you know, Zulpar Cutthroat, can essentially just drain your opponents in absolutely no time. Whenever you're sacrificing creatures, again, in Urshkrat style deck, you're going to be draining your opponents quite a bit. Also, when your creature come into play, you gain life, which is nice to pad your life total. But of course, there are other ways to take advantage of, well, hey, whenever you gain life, like drain an opponent or drain all opponents, essentially. There are plenty of those kinds of effects out there, too. So just kind of this in combination with a good amount of creature fodder, in combination with other, you know, death triggers, essentially, in combination with other Zulport type, you know, cards, you can drain your opponents in absolutely no time. Again, I think this one is a little more middle of the road as well. I mean, uh, it might be like a C tier, but it might be a B tier. For right now, let's just put it in the B tier. It's kind of middle of the road to me. I think it's probably above the others in the C tier. But again, I could be very wrong on all this. It's just my opinion. Moving on, though. Let's go Sheree. She's O's caretaker. I love this one. 2-2 two -two spirit uh, for four and a black. Whenever a creature with power one or less when you're grave from the battlefield, you may return that card to the battlefield to begin the next end step. If Sheree, she is O's caretaker, saw the battlefield. Basically, a hey, tiny creatures die and come back under your control every single turn. Now, obviously, there is that catch where, hey, uh, Sheree Shuzo's Caretaker has to be on the battlefield still. If it's not, you might just lose out on all that value that you, you know, sacrificed for a ton of value, and then they're going to be coming back. But uh, instead, if an opponent deals with it, you lose out on that. Obviously, you're also limited to really taking advantage of creatures that have small power, which is fine. There's a lot of ones that you can really take advantage of. This one can have a lot of potential. That being said, it is quite risky. So I think overall, I'm going to be putting Shiraishi's of Caretaker into the C tier. Maybe it should be a D tier commander actually compared to the other ones. But for right now, let's keep it in the C 
tier. Next up, let's go on to Radadravic of Urborg. Yeah, we're stepping things up just a little bit. 3-3 three, three, Zombie Wizard with Vigilance and Ward 2 because it needed... I feel like Wizard just started slapping Ward 2 on things. They're like, yeah, we solved Hexproof. Now let's put Ward on everything. It's like, it doesn't really need Ward. It's already good enough. 4-2 White Black. Other zombies you control Vigilance. Whenever another legendary creature you control dies, create tokens, copy of that creature, except it's not legendary. It's a 2-2 two, two Black Zombie, just other colors and types. Basically a commander that can really take advantage of, well, legendary creatures with powerful effects, powerful triggers, powerful ETBs, powerful LTBs. Yeah, this can get pretty, pretty crazy, especially in combination with, you know, populate effects as well, because again, your legendary tokens are not legendary. So there you go. Just again, get like Song of the World still out. Yeah, copy legendary creatures again and again and again. This can be quite crazy. Obviously, you are limited to just two colors. You know, for legendary creatures, there's still plenty of great ones you can take advantage of, obviously. And uh, yeah, this one, oh gosh, I mean, I'm going between A and S right now. I got to be honest in my mind. I think I've got to put this in the, oh gosh, Radadravic. I think I'm going to put you in the S tier, actually. We're just going to jump you all the way up to the S tier. There's too much kind of power potential that you can really take advantage of. There's some combos you can take advantage of as well. Yeah, and again, low to the ground protects itself. That's pretty gross. Speaking of gross, hey, Marches of the Black Rose. This one is just kind of mean. <laughs> I mean, it definitely can be mean. 3-3, three, three, Human Wizard Dethrone. That costs one blue, red, or black, red. Other creatures control of Dethrone. Dethrone, again, is if you attack the player with the most life or type of the most life, get a counter on that creature. Whenever a creature control, they counter on it, dies from the card of the battlefield. Under control, begin to extend step. Say a lot of ways you can build this commander. The most common, I'd say, and the most brutal is probably just, hey, threaten effects, stealing your opponent's creatures, gaining control of them, getting counters on them, sacrificing them, stealing them permanently, essentially. I mean, you've got to get more counters on them to keep them, but still, it's not very difficult to do. This is yeah, a pretty gross commander and one that, again, really can just benefit from your opponents having a good army. Now, obviously, you are kind of, you know, dependent upon your opponents in some ways. There's also other ways you can take advantage of, you know, certain triggers and whatnot. But overall, I think Marchese Black Rose is a very good risk at South Commander. And I'm going to throw you up in the A tier. So, yeah, congratulations, to Marchese, for making it to the A tier. Moving on, let's go on to Tesa Karlov. Okay, gross. Yet another commander that Wizard just slapped on extra things, it seems like. 2-4, Human Advisor for 2, White, Black. If a creature dying causes a triggered ability of a permanent control to trigger, that ability triggers additional time. Basically, Death Harmonicon, doubling up every single one of your death triggers. Gross. I mean, I guess like, even your opponent's death triggers as well, if you, you know, you control that trigger. Anyways, you know what I mean. The creatures, you, <laughs> creature tokens, you control Vigilance and Lifelink. Taysa Karlov did not need that text. There was no reason to throw that text on Taysa Karlov at all. And Wizard's just like, yeah, here you go. So obviously, you know, when you're making your creature fodder, when you're making a ton of tokens, they're also even more impactful in combat as well. Doubling up every single one of your death triggers is absurd. There are gross things that you can do with this. Again, there's plenty of ways to like, if a creature, non-token creature dies, you know, make more tokens. And it's like, okay, cool. Uh, yeah, let's just double up the tokens, double up our fodder every single time. Go from like, you know, one creature on board to like eight in absolutely no time sacrificing them for this and that and, you know, other kinds of effects. Yeah, it takes you absolutely no time to take your opponents out with this. So yeah, Tasa Karlov, you are, in my opinion, most definitely an S-tier aristocrat-style commander. Even though we've got some other heavy hitters as well. Yeah, Tasa Karlov, you are up there, in my opinion. Gisa, Glorious Resurrector, a very interesting commander. 4-4, four, four, Human Wizard, that costs 2 black, black. If a creature an opponent controls would die, exile instead. At the beginning of your upkeep, put all creature cards, exile the Gisa, Glorious Resurrector on the battlefield. Under your control, they gain Decayed. So, again, Decayed basically means a creature with Decayed can't block when attack, sacrifice, sound of combat. So, you kind of, like, temporarily get, like, a creature, which is nice. That being said, yeah, first up, just, you know, if a creature in controls with die exile instead, that's a great way to take out your opponent's, you know, death triggers themselves, because it's just going to be exile. You also kind of store all these creatures up for a kind of, like, a Rise of the Dark Realms type effect. That being said, again, kind of like Sheree, you are dependent on keeping Gisa in play, because... Hey, at the beginning of your upkeep, you get all those cards exiled with it. If Gisa isn't there, you're not getting that benefit. So, yeah, there is kind of that risk to this as well. It can be a big, impactful commander when it works out. If you aren't able to protect it, though, it does not. I think overall, oh, goodness gracious, I'm going to have to put you in the B tier. Oh, or the C tier. Maybe, maybe I was meant to put in the C tier. That's why I dropped it there on accident. <laughs> but, yeah, I'll throw you in the B tier for now. Moving on, we've got Ayara, first of Locked Wayne, a 2-3 Elf Noble for black, black, black. Whenever Ayara or another black creature is battlefield under control, each one lose one life and you gain one life. 
tap sacrifice on a black creature draw a card so this is kind of on the other end of things like a corpse knight type effect whenever creatures are coming into play you're draining your opponents unlike blood artists you know those kinds of effects which are the opposite you know when your creatures leave when the creatures die and you could also get some card advantage of this one tap sacrifice on a black creature draw a card it's a good effect that being said there aren't too many ways in mono black to really untap a creature and really take advantage of that it's a nice little additional card advantage but yeah you're really going to be working on getting a lot of creatures in play and there's a lot of ways to make creature fodder that being said overall in comparison to some of the other commanders out there yeah you can get some drain yeah you can get some card advantage of this as well i just think compared to some of the other ones out there this isn't quite as impactful so i are first of black Dwayne, i'm gonna throw you in the c tier which is getting quite quite busy over there so we'll see if we can spread things out a bit or if maybe you know that's okay if they're they're a little bit more concentrated next up saver queen of the golgari a 2-2 elf shaman for two black and a green whenever you sacrifice a black creature you may pay two life if you do each other player sacrifice a creature brutal whenever you sacrifice a green creature you may gain two life that side isn't really all that great i mean it is nice, I guess, to kind of offset the life loss that you're going to have when you're sacrificing creatures and making your opponent sacrifice creatures, that kind of like forced edict effect. So that can be very nice. That being said, overall, yeah, you're probably going to focus more heavily on sacrificing black creatures to keep your opponents off of creatures. So yeah, you're going to make creature fodder again. You're going to get your resumming skeletons out, and then you're just essentially going to sacrifice them, take your opponent's creatures out, and just take them down. This one is good. It is, again, there's just a lot of heavy hitters in Aristocrats, essentially. So I think overall, yes, yeah, Saver, I'm just going to put you in the D tier for now. Those ones above you, I think are just, they just are above you and you're not quite to that level. You're a good commander, but uh, again, there's just a lot of great commanders in Aristocrats. Moving on, Slimefoot and Squee. This one's an interesting one. 3-3 three, three, Fungus Goblin for black, red, green. Whenever Slimefoot and Squee enters the battlefield or attacks, create a 1-1 one, one green sapling creature token. By paying one black, red, green, sacrifice a sap ring, turn slime foot and squee up to one other target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield, activate only a sorcery. So kind of like a repeatable reanimation effect. You are in good colors. You can, you know, discard big creatures, get them into your graveyard, basically cheat them into play with this. You are dependent though on having a sapling in play. Now you do get one when squee enters the battlefield, slime foot and squee enters the battlefield or attacks. That being said, if some kind of a wrath occurs, you might be in trouble if you aren't kind of prepared for that or if you don't have other ways to make saplings. So you can just kind of be stuck at a certain point. Like if you put your command in your graveyard, you don't have any ways to make saplings. You're just kind of stuck. So yeah, because of that like restriction, I think Slimefoot and Squee, I'm going to have to put you in the D tier in comparison to these other ones. And I guess I probably should have mentioned just because they're in D tier, you know, in this or, you know, any other tiers doesn't mean that in comparison to, you know, like other episodes where I talk about, you know, they're within sets that's different this is just in comparison to each other the aristocrat commanders in comparison to each other so yeah again they're very good commanders just that some in comparison to others are not quite up to snuff moving on braids are is a nightmare three three nightmare for one black black at the game of your end step you may sacrifice an artifact creature enchantment land or planeswalker if you do each opponent may sacrifice a permanent shares a card type with it for each opponent who doesn't that player loses to life and you draw a card this is good this is limited to just your end step this is limited to you know braids needs to be in play on your end step or you're not getting this if again opponent just deals with it right before that you're going to be in trouble i mean you're not going to be able to take advantage of this you can you know force your opponents down you know to lose a lot of permanence but they also have the choice to just say you know what i'll lose the two life that's not that big of a deal you drawing a card is a bigger deal than that you can take advantage of card draw as well again this is a good commander but in comparison to the other ones I just have a feeling that this one is going to end up in the D tier. Sorry, Braids. Oh, free Braids. Free the other Braids. On ban Braids. Well, not the blue one. The blue one isn't banned, but the other one. You know what I mean. Next up, we've got Liesa Forgotten Archangel. 4-5 Angel Flying and Lifelink for 2 white, white, black. Whenever another non-tone creature you control dies, you return that card to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. If a creature opponent controls would die, exile it instead. So again, that last part is essentially, again, a great way to really, really impact decks that kind of like these really take advantage of death triggers so you can just basically stop that opponent that is going to be getting death triggers or reanimation style deck or one that really cares about creatures in the graveyard and say you know what that's just a nice negative impact the positive impact for you obviously is that hey you get your creatures back to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step if it was back immediately that would be much better it's still pretty good and again a four or five flyer with lifelink that is nice Oh, this is tough because, yeah, you can really take advantage of getting creatures back in your hand and then back into play. Again, the end step restriction just is quite a bit. If you can play at flash speed, that's quite nice. Like a Vulcan Ori, though, you can't really count on that. Liesa, oh gosh, don't hate me. You're going to be in the D tier. 
Moving on. Yeah, there's it's pretty much bottom bottom heavy right now. We'll see if we can get some of the upper levels. Here we go. Chatterfang Squirrel General. This one's pretty gross. 3-3 three, three, Squirrel Warrior with Forest Walk that costs two and a green. If one of our tokens are created in your control, those tokens plus that many 1-1 one, one Squirrel tokens are created instead. By paying a black, sacrifice X Squirrel's target creature gets plus X minus X until I have turn. This is a pretty gross commander. This is one that can generate an absurd amount of token power in absolutely no time. Again, this does not specify one or more creature tokens. This specifies just one or more tokens. So... If you're making clue tokens, if you're making treasure tokens, if you're making food tokens, if you're making any other kinds of tokens, and yes, including creature tokens like servos or whatnot, yeah, in addition to that, you are making more squirrels. So you basically can utilize them for creature fodder. This can be a great, you know, way to remove creatures from play as well by sacrificing those squirrels. Yeah, you're in good colors. You are missing out on white, which is a good risk red style color as well. There are definitely ways to take advantage of it in green too, though. But yeah, I think overall, Chatterfang, you're a very good commander. You're just underneath, I think, the S tier. So let's move you up to that A tier level. Moving on. We've got Dribnod Carnage Dominus. Okay. Basically, they're like, yeah, let's do Tesa again, essentially. 8-3. That is a ton of power. Phyrexian Horror. That costs three black black. If a creature dies, if creature dying causes a triggered ability to a permanent, you control to trigger. The ability triggers this whole time. Basically, you know, Death Harmonicon again, just like Tesa. Black, black, or Phyrexian Black, Phyrexian Black. Exile three creature cards from your graveyard. Put an indestructible counter on this. Now, I will say that exiling three creatures is not difficult at all in a Regret style deck. That being said, there are certain creatures that you might not want to exile, like, you know, a resummoning skeleton. So there is kind of a trade off with this one. But yeah, a great way to protect this. So this is a heavy hitting commander that, again, is a Death Harmonicon commander that can protect itself. That being said, you lose access to white. And I think because of that, Dribnot, I'm just gonna have to knock you down just one tier. You're going to be in the A tier instead of that S tier, but yeah, you are quite good. Moving on, we've got Thalia and the Getrog Monster, a new, very popular commander. 4-4, four, four, Human Frog Horror with First Strike and Death Touch that cost one white, black, green. You may punish the land each of your turns. Creatures are non basic land your opponent's control into the battlefield tap. Whenever Thalia and the Getrog Monster attack, sacrifice a creature land and draw a card. This is doing a ton. First of all, well, hey, uh, extra, you know, lands is never going to be a bad thing. You can really take advantage of landfall triggers. You can get ahead of your opponents on lands as well and on ramp. Also, hey, first strike death touch. This is very, very difficult, if not impossible, to stop in combat. Your opponent's got to basically block with five creatures to ever try to take it out unless they have, you know, indestructible creatures or creatures they can protect in that way. Also, you know, you can slow your opponents down, the creatures in non-basic lands. And on top of that, whenever it attacks, you can sacrifice creature land and draw a card. So there's a lot of additional card advantage for you. This is a lot going for it, a ton going for it. I just think it's just slightly underneath the other ones I'm looking at in the A tier right now. So I'm going to have to put Thawne the Gitrog Monster, this might be controversial, in the B tier. I know it's a very loved commander right now, but I think overall it does a lot for you. It's just not quite up to that power level of the A tier commander. So there you go. Moving on, we've got Marin of Clan Nel Toth, uh, a commander that just wrecked things a long time ago. <laughs> One of the original, you know, commander product commanders or back then that time essentially three four human shaman for two black and a green whenever another creature control dies you can experience counter At the beginning of your end step choose target creature card in your graveyard if that card's can break man cost is less than or equal to the number of experience counters you have turn to the battlefield otherwise put in your hand basically a very easy way to just build up experience counters it's incredibly easy and of course now we have even more proliferate effects as well on top of that hey you get something back big for free or i mean if you can't get it back get in your hand too but yeah basically you're probably just gonna be getting getting back you know cards again and again and again it is limited to you know once on your end step i think overall again it's a good commander it is one that has been outclassed over the years now it is one that definitely was more impactful than it is now it was definitely more threatening it's still very good very very good commander Oh, goodness. I think overall, though, I'm going to have to put it in the... Oh, gosh. It's either B or C right now. Let's go with the C tier. Sorry, Marin. Didn't quite make it up to the B tier. I, maybe, maybe you are, though. Maybe you are. Uh, I'm going to go back and forth on this. Oh, let's go with... Yeah, let's keep you in the C tier. Okay. Yell at me in the comments below, please. Here we go. Next up, though, we've got Will Help, the Rot Cleaver. 3-3 three, three, Zombie Warrior for 2 blue black. When another zombie control dies, but it not have decayed. Create 2-2 two, two black zombie creature with decayed. Begin your end step, you may sacrifice a zombie if you do draw a card. So basically, again, this does not specify non-token. What it is specifying is the zombie has decay. You don't get another token copy. Or not token copy, but another token. Essentially, again, there are plenty of ways to make a ton of zombie tokens that don't have decayed. So you can really take advantage of those, sacrificing them for, you know, other value outside of just drawing a card with this. This does a lot for you overall. 
Oh, goodness gracious. Just in comparison to some of the other ones, though, I still don't think it's quite up to even that B tier, though, in comparison to those. Oh, goodness gracious. Yeah, I'm going to get some comments below. Let's go with the C tier. And I really think I should move up. I'm going to move up Marin. We're going to do it. We're moving Marin up to B tier, okay? Oh, yell at me in the comments below. But yeah, I will help the Rock Lever. I think that you are, in comparison to the other ones, a C tier commander. You are good. You are limited to being good, though, in Zombie Tribal. And yeah, there's a lot of exciting things that you can do. There's a lot of crazy things you can do. I still think you are a C tier compared to the other ones, though. Moving on, Elena the Dusk Rose. Yeah, this one's a cool one. 1-1, one, one, uh, lifelinking vampire knight for two white and a black. Whatever other creature dies, you get a counter on this. When it dies, you get X-1-1 one, one white vampire creature tokens of lifelink for X Elena's power. This can be an incredibly heavy hitting commander and gain you a ton of life. And of course, yeah, once you kind of like pop the commander, once it dies, you get an absurd amount of tokens. And of course, hey, uh, there are plenty of now, you know, what do you call them essentially like return from death effects like um oh the names are escaping me right now my goodness like the undying card essentially that's one of them as well but ways to essentially get it back right away feign death that's the card that always comes to my mind feign death there we go we got there but yeah ways to essentially like okay if this would die this turn i get it right back so essentially you're like okay cool let's just you know sacrifice lend it's got 20 counters on it cool make 20 vampires also lend is coming right back let's sacrifice those vampires you can chain and drain your opponents incredibly quickly with something like this once you're set up properly yeah, I think Alenda the Dusk Rose, you are quite potent, quite powerful. I'm, though, going to put you in the B tier. I think you're a B tier commander compared to the other ones. I don't think you're quite up to that A tier level, but you are very, very, very good. Next up, Atheros God of Passage. This one many might know out there for, you know, like those Shadowborn Apostle style decks. It can be obviously built in other ways. 5 4, God that is indestructible for one white black as long as your devotion of white and black is less than seven Atheros is in a creature when another creature you can own dies return to your hand unless target opponent loses three life obviously once you're set up properly and you know opponent is low on life this is more effective because you're like hey yeah you're at 10 life you don't really want to lose any life right you're just going to give me back my creature that being said earlier on you can have a harder time convincing opponents to give your things back uh because yeah you're just going to chain them and do some very crazy things and of course shadowborn apostle decks are pretty fun they're not nearly as powerful in some ways compared to some other, some other decks that are going to be, you know, in these tiers. But, um, yeah, quite fun. Atheros got a passage, I think, overall. Oh, gosh. Comments below. Let's go with the C tier, Commander. You're very good. Just not quite there, in my opinion. And finally, oh, my goodness. Yeah, we got there. Yawgmoth, Rand Physician. I'm just going to tell you right now. It's probably an S tier, Commander. 2-4, Human Cleric. 4-2, Black. Black protects from humans. Pay one life sacrifice to a creature. Get a minus one minus counter to one target creature. Draw a card. Black, Black, discard a card. Proliferate. This does a ton of things. It is an incredible draw engine for you, first of all. Yeah, sacrifice, you know, creature fodder. Just draw through your deck in absolutely no time. Get minus one, minus one counters on your opponent's creatures. One life is absolutely nothing. Gain that back in absolutely no time. Take out your opponent's creatures without proliferating. Uh, I mean, just take them out those minus one, minus one counters as it is. And uh, yeah, this combo is incredibly easy with your own creatures. If you've got persist creatures, I believe you just need what, like two pers or not persist creatures. If you've got undying creatures, you just need like two undying creatures and this is gonna be able to go infinite for you. I mean, yeah, you are limited by like the amount of life that you have essentially and the amount of cards you have in your deck, but there are of course ways to win with that, ways to win from there. You have Zulport Cutthroat in play, I think you'd basically just win in that combination. So yeah, Yawgmoth is gross. Even outside of a combo approach, I think it's still an S tier commander. But yeah, with the combo approach as well, definitely up there. So yeah, I feel pretty good about putting that in the S tier. So yeah, I think that's the uh, overall you know list. Uh, I think I feel pretty good about these so far. Again, I really didn't look at these ahead of time, like you know try to like place them and you know have just notes on the sides. So. This is just, uh, you know, pretty, you know, off the cuff. So uh, we'll see what the comments below say. But yeah, let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. What did I really mess up on? What should have been, you know, a tier higher or a tier lower or a couple tiers higher, or a couple tiers lower? What would have you placed in the S tier? Yeah, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what your thoughts on this episode are. And of course, as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.